Hello, my name is Will Carmack, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to digitize yourself into any video, and or digitize a logo into any scene. This effect has a lot of applications, whether you're making a video game animation like me, where you're animating yourself in at a respawn point, or maybe you wanna do some cool logo reveals where the logo slowly digitizes into frame. And before we get started, I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So step one is masking out our subject. So what I'm gonna do is come up to the rotoscope tool and I am just going to frame by frame cut this man out. So now I have my knight completely masked out. Once you rotoscope something, you'll come over here and click freeze. And now that we have our masked out character, we'll just duplicate this clip and we're gonna get rid of the roto brush tool on the bottom layer. So for him to be able to pixel animate into the scene, he needs to not be in this shot. So what we're gonna do is grab this original layer and in the layers panel, we'll grab the track mat and we'll link it to the mask. And what we're gonna do is alpha invert this mask. So now our clip has this giant hole inside of it. To fill up the hole, we're gonna come to content aware fill. In case the mask didn't encapsulate everything, um, like maybe the edges of his shoes, we'll bring the alpha expansion 12. We'll click on create reference frame it's gonna open up Photoshop, and if you just control click on your layer and hit Shift Control I to inverse the layer, we'll go to Select, Modify, Expand, and 10 pixels, and you'll see it created the selection around the hole, and I'm gonna click on Generate Fill. And just like that, bam, we've recreated the background of that clip, and we'll hit Control S to save this file. And then when we look back in After Effects, you'll see that the man is gone. We've created that one reference frame, so you still need to fill up the rest of the holes. So what we're gonna do is click Generate Fill Layer. It's now it's created this fill layer, and when you go through the composition, your person is no longer there. So if you grab the mask, which is being used as an alpha mat, we can make it visible again and put it on top of your reference frame. So you can see at any point in the composition, we can make him invisible, and he is no longer in the scene. So so for our next step, we'll be creating the wipe that slowly turns into the pixel animation. I'm gonna select the rectangle tool at the top and make sure the fill is white. And I'm just going to double click on the triangle rectangle so we get a full composition wide shape layer. What I'm gonna do is come to the position and I'll create a keyframe and I'm gonna bring it down off screen and over like six seconds, I will then use the position keyframe to make the white shape layer fill up the entire screen again. And so when you play it back, it looks like this and the white shape layer is slowly filling up the entire screen. So now we can take our alpha layer of the man and in our layers panel, we can grab the track mat pick whip and we'll select the shape layer. And so now the man is only gonna be present where the shape layer is. So he wipes up into the screen. So now to get our pixely look, we're gonna start animating the shape layer. So in our effects presets panel, we're gonna grab the effect turbulent displace and we're gonna bring this onto the shape layer. So we're gonna set the amount to 200 and the size to 20 and the complexity to 10. And so from first glance, it looks like he's kind of disintegrating into his own body. And so next, to make it more pixely, we are gonna to go to effects and presets and type in mosaic. Mosaic is great, it turns everything pixely. And what we wanna set this to is 200 horizontal blocks in 100 vertical blocks. So now when you look at that back, you see these perfect little pixely squares. And so now that we have this beautiful animation of him animating in, we're going to select the shape layer and the mask, this right here, and we are going to pre-compose this and we'll call this animate in. So we have our dude animating in. So now we're gonna go back up to effects and presets and type in fill and drop the fill effect on this guy. And instead of red, we're actually going to animate him to be white. And now is where the magic really starts to happen. We're going to duplicate this layer. And then on the bottom clip, we're gonna go back to the track mat in the layers panel we're gonna select the top layer and we're gonna click invert. So now we have this beautiful digitally line that goes up the silhouette of his body like this. You will notice that there's this little white line left behind by the alpha mat. So what we're gonna do to get rid of that is on our bottom layer that's visible, we're gonna go to effects and presets and type in mini max. We're gonna set it to minimum and then on channel, we're gonna do alpha in color and we're gonna set the radius to one. Sometimes you'll have to do more than one, but looks like one 
is enough to get rid of that white line. So now we just have this beautiful pixely line. So if you grab your animate in pre-comp again and put that underneath of this, you can see what that looks like now. There's these white pixels on top of your mask. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pixel lines, we're gonna select both of those layers that gives you this look, and we're going to right click and pre-compose. We'll call this digital, and we're gonna call it digital fade. So if we solo the a mask in the digital fade, you can see this cool looking thing. So to make the digital fade even cooler, what we're gonna do is in effects and presets, we're gonna type in CC glass. And if we drop down surface and for property, we're gonna do alpha. And then for softness, we're gonna do zero. We're gonna change the height to negative 50 and then displacement to 200. So now if you look at your dots, they're way more digital and glitchy looking. So this is what it currently looks like. And to make this look even cooler and glitchy, we're gonna type in displacement map. We're gonna drag a displacement map on this layer and we're gonna set the max horizontal to 100 and max vertical to zero. We're gonna duplicate this displacement map and then we're gonna change max horizontal to negative 200. So now our digital pixely outline is glitchier and cooler than ever. And now to give this some pretty color in effects and presets, we're gonna type in colorama, drop that on top of our scale and we're gonna drop down input phase on Colorama and, and we're gonna add phase right here. Instead of none, we're gonna select digital fade. And if we drop down modify, we're gonna unselect modify alpha. So now our lines have these subtle colors inside of them. So if I unsolo everything, we can see what our person looks like right here. We're gonna set the digital fade to add and then, and, and now we're gonna make it glowy. We're gonna type in deep glow and effects and presets. Now you can see the digital line is glowing as he fades in. We're just going to crank up the exposure and the radius. So now if we watch that back, this night slowly digitizes in. And I actually think these blocks are a little too small. And what's great about this effect, you can always go back into the pre-comp and change different aspects. Like on our original shape layer right here, I feel like the blocks are too small. So I'm gonna change it to 100 horizontal blocks, 50 vertical blocks. So now you can see that the fade in is much chunkier. And so now in the main pre-comp, you can see that the blocks are way wider and it looks super cool. So now when we watch that back, our character perfectly digitizes in and it just looks freaking gorgeous. And this is an endlessly customizable effect because you can always go back into Colorama and in output cycle, you can play with all of these different presets so you can change the color of these glows. So now I have it on Caribbean, which is just like a blue digital fade up. And so this effect is good for anybody wanting to do any kind of visual effects with video games. You can even spice it up by taking the original mask right here that's fading in and you can put the curves effect on it. And let's say you want it to be green. So you can like crank up the green and you can create a keyframe for curves. And when the animation starts to happen, you'll create that keyframe that makes it really green. And then over time, you can just reset curves. So as he's animating in, he's going from green to normal color. And so when you add that with your digital fade, so he's coming in green, but ends up normal color. This is the perfect effect. I think it's so pretty and cool. And one thing you wanna make sure to do when you're doing this effect is this content aware fill play. And so the moment your character fully animates in, you can just grab the uh, fill like this right here and then just delete it. So when he fully animates in, he's back in his original background. And you can ease it in too by creating two keyframes for opacity, starting it at 100 and then fading it back down to zero. So over time, once he's fully animated in, you get the original background back. I'm literally obsessed with this effect. So you can repeat these steps on anything and create like a digital scan look, whether it's animating in people or it's animating in logos. I hope everyone liked this tutorial and it's time to thank my amazing sponsor, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world. And I wanna create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with 
Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers. A nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well, how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.